Howdy everyone, it's me once again, the one and only Killer Rodan. And today, as you can see, I'm still continuing my Disney movie marathon by doing a follow-up video, which I've done already, I guess. So yeah, this is part two. So, let's... Christ, yeah, how wonderful. Great. More bullshit. But, um, alright. Basically, it's centered around the idea that, a brief recap, I guess, is that this guy, he's acting, he's all wholesome and great and all that jazz. He's a family man. Oh, boy. And, of course, wants to attack Frozen because the fact that the problems re were resolved in the film was without Christ. And, therefore, it's a bad movie just because of that. Because if there's any conflict in life, it should re just revolve Jesus and nobody else. Yeah. That is one big pile of shit. I even have the 4K version of this film just out of spite. Because it's religious people just keep complaining about this movie. But anyway, so like I said, he was trying to tie it into the Ten Commandments like he was doing in a previous video. And uh, by the way, I got that brand, brand spanking you just you know, that we're finding a movie. Just to, just throwing that out there. Uh, anyway, that's what I was saying. He was talking about murder, stealing. This is the general idea of being dishonest. Though, what does it have to do with the movie, I don't know. And he's trying to tie into uh, somebody, somebody's lusting. Um, I mean, who are you to tell me who can't sleep with and how to do it? Though, again, what does that have to do with the movie, I still don't know. But anyway, let's just try to finish this one, this one up because, like I said in my previous video, I'm going to do three parts to this. Because uh, the the podcast he he did had done it just went on and on and on and on and on ugh and on and on and on or some uh something of course as you can guess yourself it's extremely padded which it is all right without being sad let's just get this out of the way shall we ugh man do you have evil thoughts. I know I do. <laughs> I know I have angry thoughts where I'm not justified in the anger. And even when I am, my anger goes far beyond anything reasonable based on what happened. You mean everybody's capable of having evil thoughts? Okay. You're just, you're just using that as a way to gaslight. I know I have all kinds of lustful th thoughts. Just you mean wanting to have a desire for somebody in a sexual manner? That unto itself doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing point being i'm trying to make here you should have self-control and he's trying to compare that yes to being evil what the hell i know i run people down in my mind and if you think how can you confess that in the pulpit it's like well i don't think i'm the only one here i think that we all have evil thoughts I have to disagree with you on that, because you don't necessarily need a religion to know what's wrong or what's right. But that means that we are all defiled. So what do we do with that? Again, he's arguing the fact that you need Christianity to help you with those impulses rather than self-control. I can tell you what many people do with that. You escape the problem by not thinking about it. Well, that was a load of shit. That's how we handle unsolvable problems again. All right, we say lunch. What are we eating for lunch? So, in other words, you just don't deal with sad problems. Is how you could solve it. What are you saying? He was not making any sense, like at all, whatsoever. It's what the politicians do in Washington. Things. Again, I'm the, I'll be the one to say not every single politician is a piece of shit because not all of them are. Oh, but he's trying to argue that they're not Christian enough. Bankrupt. Let's fight about something else. Parents with older child's room. Wow, that's a messy room. I know just how to clean up that room. I'm going to close the door. Good. That room is clean. The Pharisees, I think, are the same. There had to be some reflective Pharisees. They had to know that their hearts were defiled. And they had to know how hard it was to clean that up. So he said, you know what? Let's talk about what we eat. Because that's hard, but we can do it. We can keep kosher. 
Today, I want to encourage you not to escape. For 20 minutes, look into the abyss. Look at the problem. Jesus says that we're all defiled. What are you going to do about it? Again, in other words, like I just said, he's claiming that to fix your life problems, you have to be a Christian. Well, I want to encourage you to judge yourself by God's standard. We have another dodge, which is we say a curve. I want, I want grading on a curve. That's what the math teacher did when we all failed chapter 7. He said, forget it, I'm going to grade on a curve. So let's grade on a curve. I'm better than she is. I'm better than he is. Uh, given the parents I had, I'm doing okay. You know, we're terrible judges of that. Terrible judges. We give ourselves all kinds of slack. Well, I was tired when I said that, so I should be excused. I was sick when that happened. So, But she, she meant all of that. Okay. All kinds of slack we give to ourselves, judging ourselves by what we'd like to say our intentions were, judging the other person with what the actions were. We can hardly lose on that standard. Yeah, judge people by their actions. That sounds perfectly logical. Of course, that's not really the argument he's saying here. He's trying to use that as a way to mock the other side, the other team. Because, oh, how dare they? They're different from us. Less than all. Okay, that seems rather harsh, don't you think? Okay, someone is different than you are. That doesn't make the individual evil right off the bat. But even if we did judge ourselves and others fairly, so what? It's the wrong standard. To be really brutal, one pig may be a little cleaner than the other pig. It is still not welcomed to walk down into Windsor Castle. Or you may know more algebra than the kid in the- Yeah, you're supposed to judge people fairly, but he's acting, oh, it's the wrong way of fairness. What? That doesn't mean NASA should hire you to plot the path for the next rocket to go to Mars. Uh, the fairness he's referring to, it has to be the Christian fairness, otherwise it won't count. Judge yourself by God's standard. Judging yourself by other people is just a way to escape the real issues. Uh, what? Yeah, as a society, as a human being, as a collective thing, yeah, you should. What are you talking about? By God's standard, understand, we're defiled. So how do you know God's standard? Somebody comes back. I have another dodge. How, how can I know God's standard? Well, why don't you just judge verse 18 and 19 for yourself? Can you argue with it? What comes out of the mouth comes from the heart. On that definition of heart, that's surely true. That defiles a person. We're not talking about dirt on your chin. We're talking about in God's sight. Out of the heart come evil thoughts and murder and adultery and all these things defile a person. What does any of this have to do with anybody having sex with somebody and then the partner in crime, so to speak? What is it? Okay, he's trying to argue diplomacy, but he has to be the right kind of diplomacy, the Christian version. Ugh. Yes. Hard to argue with when you face it. All we have is dodges. So what is the solution? That's technically what you're doing, but then I'm trying to argue, oh, it's the other side that's doing it. No, you. No, you. No, you're doing it. No, you're doing it. No, you're doing it. No, you. No, you. Because remember, God sees our thoughts. We can perhaps work on the rest of the list and be okay. I'm, all, I'm okay on the list after evil thoughts. Yeah, maybe you are. But what about the thoughts? God sees the thoughts. And it's not enough if your thoughts are sometimes good. That's what the food laws taught. That, that's one of the points of the kosher food laws. If you ate lamb 29 days a month, and then you ate pork on the 30th day, you were not... Wait, what, what is this business about eating a certain type of food and a certain amount of it? And having God knowing what you think about 24-7? That seems really creepy, don't you think? He knows when you're awake. He knows when you're asleep. He knows you're doing something bad. Hey. The kosher laws. And so, if your thoughts are mostly good, I'm impressed if they really are, but they're still, they're still evil thoughts. We're still defiled in God's sight. What are we going to do? Mind your business, that's all. Mind your business. Well, we should start by accepting that not only are we defiled, we cannot clean ourselves up. Oh, please. You, you're looking as if, oh, you have to be Christian to be a great, wonderful, wholesome person. Otherwise, you're a scumbag. 
That's a lie right off the bat. You can take a shower. You can keep kosher. But alone you cannot clean up yourself so that you're not defiled before God. Acknowledge that you are not only not meeting God's standard, you're not able to meet God's standard. One of the great men in local history here is Ben Franklin. Okay, ben Franklin is a great American, lived in Philadelphia, an amazing man. Yeah, thank you for the gaslighting again, though. Much appreciated. Please gaslight me even more. Much appreciated. And I've read his autobiography in a bridged version. It's all the library head. All right. And I'm reading it, and as a young man, he was raised in more Puritan Boston and came down here for Philadelphia's more freewheeling ways, whatever. All right, but... Uh, boy, and he's just trying to argue that he's a great guy because he's Christian. Uh, newsflash, okay, here's something I've mentioned quite a few times before, and I'll say it again here. This is not a Christian nation, and America should never be a Christian nation. I don't care what you have to say. had a moral conscience, and so he said, you know what, I should be able to rid myself of sin. I just need a good method. He says, I keep this diary, and I write in it every day, and I'm going to list the Ten Commandments, and whenever I go over the day in my mind, I'm going to put a dot next to whatever commandment I broke that day. Yeah, he's saying that he became a great, fantastic person because of the Bible. Oh, come on. He did not. And with this focused attention, I am going to rid myself of those sins. So I'm going to get to the point where I don't have to put any dots down. You do have to admire the moral seriousness here. He was trying to rid himself of sin. He was trying to come up with a disciplined scientific method to do it. it was How was any of that scientific in any which way? You haven't explained that aspect yet. What are you talking about? He's a brilliant scientist. He's being serious morally. He's, by the way, America's first self-help author is Ben Franklin. Again, he's strongly implying that he became and other people became great because of the Bible. Again, that's a lie. And so I'm reading the autobiography, and he comes up, and he's talking about it, and he comes to the Seventh Commandment, and all the abridged book gave me was dots. It gave me an ellipsis. It censored what he had to say about the Seventh Commandment. Funny how he leaves out that Ben Franklin likes to, you know, have fun, if you know what I mean, and quite often, too. What I understand, however, he had to admit that he never solved that one. He never got to the point. If you know anything about him in Paris, you know that's true, all right? He never solved the Seventh Commandment. Well, that's a complete lie. He did went to France, where well, he had some fun time, you know what I mean? And quite often, too. But not only that, the real reason he was there is because he wanted to have used diplomacy in some ways, because it was this whole bit with the British and whatnot. Because the thing is that he wanted to make it with his side stronger. So there's a whole lot of detail that this guy's leaving out. The British are coming. The British are coming. I'm pretty sure you heard that before. But, again, if you want to be more, a bit more specific here, is that he went over there to get some assistance, as I was saying, because the whole bit with monarchy, excuse me, I've butchered that a little bit. And yes, again, while he was there, he had, he had a lot of fun time with the maids, even, again, if you know what I mean here. Yes, you can say this argues from the, from the wars before and whatnot. Again, he's leaving out the fact that he had some fun time. But anyway, moreover is that, of course, that's not like the whole thing right here, folks. I'm kind of skimming it myself, but point being is that the French, of course, got their ass handed to them out uh, of some period in the fights prior to this, but but Brent Franklin over here wanted to get some assistance anyway because he knew that this, these individuals, the British, were going to be pretty tough on their own. And even though despite the fact that maybe uh, when it comes to the yeah, there's like a whole backstory here, but of course, the French went to revenge because the British pretty much kicked their ass pretty much. There's a whole bit here, but still, he's glancing out a lot of stuff. He never got himself there. Now, if Ben Franklin, a man of considerable energy, will, intelligence, really going at it, cannot rid himself of sin and knows it, neither can you and neither can I. You know that by experience, and the Bible agrees. Genesis 6, the thoughts of man's heart are only evil continually. That's grim. Yeah, so God sends the flood. What does God say right after the flood? After he's got the humanity down to the best family? Yeah, the whole Noah thing, the flood, two of each animal, then he has to restart the whole human rights. That's like a whole Cameroon I don't really want to go into because that's like a whole other thing here. 
But again, what does that have to do with the movie? Uh, just being really random. Again, he's trying to beat your head with the idea that to have a great family structure, it has to be Christian. Which, again, again, it's a complete lie. Ugh. He says, The thoughts of man's heart are only evil continually. Now, God is not content with that. He tells Israel, Circumcise your heart. Cut away the sin. Love the Lord with all your heart. But it didn't happen. And so the prophet Jeremiah has to say, The heart is desperately was sick. It's wicked and desperately sick. Who can understand it? But we got to get the heart right. So the wisdom literature says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Guard your heart. From out of it come the issues of life. I still don't know what this has to do with uh, men being girly or people being part of the LGBT plus community in any shape or form. What does that have to do with anything? I would say that comment. That's not me trying to you know, talk shit about trans people, but there are... A lot of crossers who look girly is what I'm getting at. But wisdom literature doesn't get people there. Ecclesiastes follows up, there's surely not a man on earth who does what is right. It should be your prayer for a pure heart. Create in me a clean heart, O God, says the psalmist. Again, 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 why do you specifically have to be Christian to be good? You don't necessarily have to. You have not provided any kind of proof of any shape or form. But the psalmist never gets there. Psalm 143, Lord, don't enter into judgment with your servant, for in your sight no man is just. So fix your mind on the problem for one morning. What comes out of your heart defiles you in God's sight. Your standard doesn't matter. Your culture standard doesn't matter. God's standard is what counts, and you fail by that standard. You know it. I know it. What are you going to do about it? Uh, man, uh, this, gave me, this, gave me a head, this, this is making my head hurt. You just have to be a good person at a, at whatsoever. Funny how a lot of you Christians will be really judgmental for those who live differently than you do. And if someone dresses up a certain way, acts a certain way, and whatnot, who cares? As long, just mind your business. As long as nobody's getting hurt, who cares? Seems really judgmental, don't you think? That's just yes, of course. But who cares? Why does this matter? Why? Why? I don't get it. If there's anybody that's coming off cruel, it's you Christians. Because a lot of you Christians trying to go after the LGBT plus community. Even if it's just cross even people who like to cross-dress. You go after those people, even if they technically didn't do anything wrong. Like, whatsoever. Oh boy, this makes no sense. You need to admit that you need both forgiveness and change. You need both. You need both forgiveness for your sins, and you need change. Yeah, he's really trying to just beat you over the head with, you have to be Christian, 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 you have to be Christian to be, to be, Christian, to be a, a great person. Oh, In other words, yeah, us Christians will forgive you for your transgressions, you know, yada, 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 all that jazz. And what? What are you talking about? If you're defiled, you need to be cleaned up. But then you need to stay cleaned up. You need both the new clothes and the ability to stay clean. Uh, one of my children, <laughs> all of my children, one that I'm thinking of right now, used to spit up a lot as a baby. And so we'd be ready to go somewhere, and one of the grandparents would say, well, wait, we're not going yet. I'm going to go change the baby. I'm like, why are you going to go change the baby? Well, because he smells sour. Which is his... Yeah, as if it wasn't obvious enough, he's using his child, the baby, as a metaphor for the, for the non-Christians. Non-Christians need to be cleaned up, so to speak. It doesn't smell very good anymore. I'm like, well, what is the point of changing him? In five minutes, he's going to spit up and smell the same. What do you, let's just go. Again, he's trying to use a metaphor here. Ooh, what's the point? Yeah, he's trying to argue that the other individuals would just make a counterpoint to that, you know, to that Christian bit. Give me a break. And that was that kid. The current kid, you can't get her off the changing table. You can say, oh, she smells bad. You change the clothes, you put the new clothes on. You're know, like, I couldn't even pick you up before. All right. We need both forgive. All right. Uh, I get it. I, I see the metaphor you're trying to use here. Uh, I get it. Ugh. This, this guy. Then we need change. We need both a new set of clothes. And we need the ability not to instantly 
defile them again. Again, all right. I, I get it. I get it. You, in order to gain this sort of ability or whatever, you have to be Christian, which again is a complete lie. We need to admit that. But where are we going to find it? Uh, you're going to be a good person right off the bat and not be a Christian? Oh, great. Now I feel like I'm repeating myself here. Oh, thanks a lot. Oh, boy. Ugh. You know, you can find some interesting things in Buddhism. You won't find that. That wasn't Buddhist thing. Buddhist thing was about eliminating suffering. I don't think I would call Buddhism a religion, but okay. Of course you're going to talk down about other people's belief system. Of course you would, without providing any kind of evidence. Uh, of course. And he has some interesting points about if you didn't want so much, you wouldn't suffer so much when you don't get it. But he has nothing about God. Uh, what are you talking about? What? So he's suffering because he's a Buddhist. That doesn't make any sense. Like, at all. Just, let, just leave those people alone. Not the original Buddhism. And so nothing about dealing with defilement before God. Oh, that's extremely childish. Oh, sure. Insult the people you don't like without actually uh, describing what's actually wrong. Okay. And Islam says, well, Allah will forgive some people. Okay, what do I need to do? Well, you know, it's up to Allah. Oh, okay. Now we're going to talk about the Muslim religion. Oh, okay. Okay. Here we are. Okay. Ugh. Attacking, it's just attacking everybody, are you? Just trying to call them hypocrites is what he's saying. If you're a martyr, maybe uh, he might forgive you, but uh, other than that, you don't really know. All right, folks, that would be the last bit for this video. I will make one more, one more after this, and that'll, that'll be it. Just three parts, you guess. Yep, you can begin a three-parter. So again, this is a whole, this is about a whole lot of nothing. Again, not surprising because the first part of this was a whole lot of, of nothing, like at all. So that's. Uh, the whole point here I'm trying to make here is that how a lot of these religious individuals, uh, as if it wasn't obvious enough, they show love to pick and frozen. A lot. And I do mean a lot. And of course, they try to come up with all these ridiculous explanations as to why they believe that they're going to attack this movie. I guess in this case, like I was saying in the previous video, this individual doesn't like the fact that the, the conflict revolution... Revelation, however, you know, you know, say basically fixing all the problems within what's going on with Anna, what's going on with Hans, Kristoff, Olaf, whatever the case, like whatever, like whatever, like internal problems they have within the family, whatever internal problems they have within themselves, or whatever external problems that's you know outside the kingdom or uh, whatever the case may be, politics or whatever, like whatever the case may be, whatever, literally any problem that they're having in any shape or form. It's not being resolved by using the Bible. You know, Jesus and all that. It bothers him. Though he never really explained why that's a problem. And he just, yeah, he's just saying that just, just because. He's just saying that just, just because. It's happening just because. All right. But, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, when it comes to religious people, I, I want to go out these these kinds of podcasts mostly due to the fact that if it comes to this kind of stuff, this kind of bigotry, yes, I do believe it should be caught out. It should be, you know, uh, brought up, being given light, because it's, it's nonsensical. And, I mean, if it was just here and there, it's kind of like whatever, I guess. But, like I was saying a moment ago, this this, this is becoming like a, a really frequent thing. Yeah, ever since the original Frozen was released, ever since the first one was released, this film, okay, I should say film series, has been in a lot of heat. Okay, no pun intended, but even though this is specifically about the first one, that's the thing. That's what I was talking about the first, uh, in the first video. Uh, we're just talking about just the first movie. Even though he's doing it in a rather poorly constructed way, because he's not gone to the point, like, whatsoever. He's bringing up, like, 50, 80, 100, or even a thousand different things. That's not even remotely connected. And it's not really. Maybe, uh, maybe vaguely connected, maybe. You think it might be connected, but not really. Deep down, no. If you actually give some thought, which this individual really didn't, it's not connected. What does okay? You bought Allah, you bought Buddhist, and and all that, and all that jazz. And okay, what does anything? Okay, people cheating, people being dishonest, murder, uh, 
adultery, cheating, or stuff like this. Oh, and people, you know, you get married, having sex before sex is a sin, apparently. Which, even though it's, even though it's not your business. Okay, what does any of this have to do with the movie? What does any of this have to do with anything? How's anything? How's anything connected to anything? And how's this supposed to be in relation to the first Frozen movie? I don't understand this. And but yeah, like I said, I'm gonna do one more part of this, at least with this specific bit, I guess. And yeah, like I said, we we're saying earlier, folks. When it comes to this kind of thing, yes, it's still bigotry. That, that's um, it's why I'm is why I'm doing this. Christians do have a strong influence in America, so I'm not really uh, when it comes to the. Uh, Disney fans. I know a lot of Disney fans had complained about this movie as well. I'm not trying to say that. I'm not trying to paint the picture that none of Disney fans ever complain about this film, which would be a lie because yes, they have a lot. A lot of Disney fans have complained about this film, but I'm not really too worried about them. Really, like at all. That's why you don't see me making videos about the Disney fans. Really, not at all. I, I usually won't um, unless it's something super serious, like something that's actually needs to be uh, talked about, but if it's just a matter of opinion, I'm like, whatever. But, I'm going after the, this crazy like this mostly because, like I just said a moment ago, they do have a strong grip. And like I said earlier, this is not a Christian nation, and it shouldn't be. Even though a lot of them seem to believe that it is. So, I just talk about this kinds of stuff due to the fact that you know, there's a lot of churches, there's, you know, there's the Jehovah's Witnesses, and then there was the, which of course is a sub- set of the Christianity, even though there's, there's, of course, there's the Mormon church, even the Mormon church has its own thing going on, there may be different versions of it, and of course, there's even the Catholic church, there's the Western church, Catholic church, and then there's the uh, s South, I guess, church, and then there's also the, let me see, what else, oh yeah, when it comes to, you know, the Catholic, and there's also the Irish Catholic, then the Scottish Ch Catholic, and then the Southern Scottish Church, Catholic Church, and whatnot. There's also, um, of course, uh, many other versions when it comes to Christianity, of course, when you think about it. Oh, boy. Obviously, of course, also the Roman Catholic, the Protestant, and of course, Eastern Orthodox, of course. And yes, obviously, there's going to be many other denominations of this kind of a thing, like I was saying earlier. So, yikes. So, the point being is that I just want to bring up this kind of stuff, of course. And there's also the Baptist, I was, as I was saying. But yeah, I just want to talk about this kind of thing, considering the fact that a lot of these religious individuals seem to be, you know, attacking Frozen. For a ridiculous number of reasons, obviously. And this is my way to just bring it up. Of course, it's not. Of course, it's th this kind of thing should not be done. You, if you can judge a movie, trying to judge the movie in its own merits. But of course, uh, a lot of these individuals will act as if oh, it's not holy enough or whatnot. But the thing is that why does it have to be? Why does it have to be religious in order to be good? Because according to these individuals, it has to be good. It has to be religious in order to be good, which of course is very close-minded. It doesn't have to be religious at all, whatsoever. Like not at all. Personally speaking, I don't. I don't think it should. Of course, and but according to these people, it says it has to go under their practices, their traditions. Even though, even if they did do that, still gonna be some other individuals can complain anyway because it's not found in their version of the Bible. I was saying there's multiple different versions of Christianity, and if it's not following. One specific verse in the Bible, the other one's gonna complain. Anyway, so just this is confusing. Oh boy, but I guess I'll just end it now, folks. Stay tuned for part three. I will make a part three as soon as I can. So there you have it. Anyway, folks, as always, thanks for watching and take care. Until next time, see you.